Introduction Dear friends, you must have seen farmers working in paddy fields. They work for all day long. But have you ever wondered that where do they get that energy to do their work with full enthusiasm? Actually, like us, they also get this energy from the food that they eat. In other words, we can say that food is the main source of energy for our body to perform daily activities. We get our food from both plants and animals. Food has to be produced on a large scale to meet everyone's requirements. In this module, we will discuss about crop production and its management for the distribution of food. Objectives At the end of this module, you will be able to Categorize crops on the basis of seasons in which they grow. List the types of tools used for plowing. List the advantages of manure and fertilizers. Describe the different methods of irrigation. Define weeds and weedicides. Describe harvesting and storage of crop. Explain animal husbandry. Friends, have you ever looked at a ground nut plant? Can we call it a crop? No, we cannot. Do you know the fact that when same types of plants are grown at a large scale, then it is called a crop. If you wish to grow a pea plant in the hot season, you can't do it. Do you know the reason behind it? In India, crops are broadly classified into two categories on the basis of the season they are grown in. That is, rabi crops and kharif crops. Rabi crops are usually grown in the winter season from October to March. Wheat, gram and peas are the examples of rabi crop. Kharif crops are usually sown in the rainy season, generally from June to September. Paddy, maize, groundnut, etc. are some common examples of Kharif crop. To grow crops, various activities are performed which are known as agricultural practices. Let us know them one by one in detail. Dear friends, do you know that how farmers grow crops in a large field? What is their first requirement? Well, first of all, they prepare the soil for growing the crop. For that, they turn the soil and loosen it. The loosened soil helps in the growth of earthworms and microbes present in the soil. These organisms are also known as farmers' friends. They add humus to the soil. Turning and loosening of soil brings the nutrient-rich soil to the top. These nutrients are then used by the plants. Now look at this farmer. He is plowing the field. As we can see that it is made up of wood, let us see its structure. It contains a strong triangular iron strip called plowshare. And the main part of the plow is a long log of wood called plow shaft. Another tool used in plowing is a hoe. It is used for removing weeds and for loosening the soil. It has a long rod of wood and this strong, broad and bent plate of iron works like a blade. Most of you must have seen tractors in the farms. Nowadays, plowing is done by tractor-driven cultivator which saves both labor and time. Once plowing is done, next step is sowing. Before sowing, farmers select good quality seeds to get high yields. Have you ever noticed your mother putting some grains in a vessel and pouring some water to it? What happens after a few minutes? Some seeds start to float. What is the reason behind this? Some damaged seeds float on water because they are hollow and hence lighter. Actually, this is a good method for separating good, healthy seeds from the damaged ones. Now let us see what are the tools used for sowing seeds. Look at this farmer. He has a funnel-shaped tool for sowing seeds. Observe them closely. What is he doing with this tool? Yes, he is filling seeds into the funnel and passing them down through the sharp ends of the pipe to get them seeded in the soil. 
This is a traditional method and very easy. Nowadays farmers use modern seed drills for sowing with the help of tractors. I'm sure you're wondering how this seed drill works. It sows the seeds uniformly at proper distance and depth, ensuring that seeds get covered by the soil after sowing. This process also saves a lot of time and labor. Friends, now let us move on to the next topic of this module. I am sure you must have heard the term manure many a times. Do you know what it is? Okay, let us see. Manure is an organic substance obtained from the decomposition of plant and animal wastes. To make it, farmers dump plant and animal wastes in pits at open places where it is decomposed by microorganisms. Soil fertility and nutrients are reduced due to repeated cultivation of crops year after year. Farmers therefore add manure to the fields to replenish the soil with nutrients. This process is called manuring. Now let us look at some of the major advantages of organic manure. Manure enhances the water holding capacity of the soil. It makes the soil porous due to which exchange of gases become easy. It improves the texture of the soil. It also increases the number of friendly microbes necessary for a healthy crop. Like manure, fertilizers are also used in replenishing the lost nutrients and minerals in the soil. Fertilizers are the chemicals used to add minerals like potassium, phosphorus and nitrates to the soil. Fertilizers are produced in factories. Some examples of fertilizers are urea, ammonium sulfate, potash and NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. The use of fertilizers increases the crop yield. However, there are some disadvantages of using fertilizers. Excessive use of fertilizers makes the soil less fertile and they also have become a source of water pollution. Difference between fertilizers and manures. Till now we have learned about manures and fertilizers and their uses. Now let us move on to know another method of replenishing the soil with nutrients. It is known as crop rotation. Do you know when the cereal crop like rice is grown in the soil, it uses up a lot of nitrogenous salts that if another cereal crop is grown in the same soil, the soil becomes nitrogen deficient. So by rotation, a leguminous crop should be grown after cereal crop. You will be surprised to know that some bacteria is present in the root nodules of these leguminous plants. These are known as rhizobium bacteria which fix atmospheric nitrogen to form nitrogen compounds. When these nitrogen compounds go into the soil, the soil becomes more fertile. Thus, planting leguminous plant will result in nitrogen-rich soil and when a cereal is grown in the soil, food grain production increases. Friends, as we all know that water is very essential for all living beings, but what is its role in the production of crops? Actually, water is essential for crops because germination of seeds cannot take place under dry conditions. Water is absorbed by the plant roots and along with it, minerals and fertilizers are also absorbed. Hence, watering the crops in the fields is called irrigation. The time and frequency of irrigation varies from soil to soil, crop to crop, and season to season. Now the question arises, what are the sources of irrigation? Wells, tube wells, ponds, lakes, rivers, dams, and canals are the sum of the main sources of water irrigation. Let us now know modern methods of irrigation. A sprinkler system. This system is most useful on the uneven land where sufficient water is not available. In this system, the perpendicular pipes, having rotating nozzles on top, are joined to the main pipeline at regular intervals. When water is allowed to flow through the main pipe under pressure with the help of a pump, it escapes from the rotating nozzles and gets sprinkled on the crop as if it is raining. Next is a drip system. 
In this system, the water falls drop by drop just at the position of the root. It is the best technique for watering fruit plants, gardens and trees. We can see water is not wasted at all and hence we can say that it is a boon in regions where availability of water is very poor. Friends, what do you think that the farmers do after the crop is mature? Yes, he cuts the crop. This process is called harvesting and it is an important task. Now let us know how the harvesting is done. In harvesting process, crops are pulled out or cut close to the ground by using sickle or a machine called harvester. After this, the grain seeds are separated from the shaft. This process is called threshing. This is carried out with the help of a machine called combine, which is in fact a combined harvester and a thresher. Once harvesting is done, crops are stored in huge storages. We should keep some precautions to store crops because if the harvested grains are stored without drying, then they may get spoiled or attacked by organisms and thus they will lose their germination capacity. So the grains should be properly dried in the sun to reduce the moisture in them. Do you know the fact that farmers store grains in jute bags or metallic bins but for large-scale storage of grains, farmers use silos and granaries. Generally, people also keep dried neem leaves in an iron drum for storing food grains because, because these dried neem leaves protect the grains from pests and microorganisms. Friends, do you know, like plants, animals also provide us with different kinds of food. Many people living in the coastal areas consume fish as a major part of their diet. You will be surprised to know that, just like the process of crop production, animals are also reared at home or in farms. They are provided with proper food, shelter and care so that they provide us healthy food to eat. This process is called animal husbandry. In other words, we can say that animal husbandry means rearing and breeding livestock on a large scale. Summary Now friends, let us summarize what we have learned so far. In India, crops can be broadly categorized into two types based on seasons they are grown in, Rabi and Kharif. Supply of water to crops at appropriate intervals is called irrigation. Harvesting is the cutting of the mature crop manually or by machines. Separation of the grains from the shaft is called threshing. Proper storage of grains is necessary to protect them from pests and microorganisms. Animal husbandry means rearing and breeding livestock on a large scale.